Master Yi is easily one of the most hated and brain dead champions in all of League of Legends. This champion is not only hated by the player base as being too simple and broken, he's also hated by the balance team as well. Clicking a champion and pressing E doesn't take a lot of skill. So why isn't every single Master Yi player in Challenger then? What are the best Master Yi players in the world doing to actually hit a high rank? Today we speak to the number one Master Yi in the world, how he was able to hit top 10 Challenger in EU West, the secret to his success, and he explains that it's not really about right-clicking the enemy champion faster, but rather how he's able to stand still and do nothing at all. Master E is like, he's so hard to balance, I think, because he kind of only does one thing, which is like, fuck you up. People will not be like, damn, this guy played Master e for five years, always practicing and finally hit rank one. Even when Master had 30% win rate, he hit challenger, he tried his absolute best to always win. People would always be like, uh, yeah, Master is broken right now. Uh... Master E, please. We have no, to do that get out of here. He sucks. Natality Master E. No, Dude, no. I'm gonna find you the profile of the player I play against. He's broken. That guy makes it look like it's broken. No, yeah. He just used you and he one shots you. I got his name. Okay. Look. Look at him! What MMR? Grandmaster 500 LP. What? Look at him! Smurfing every game, man! One shot now. <laughs> Why is he so fast? The Jinx! Ah! I'm gonna get your ass! I'm gonna get your ass! Look at this! Look at this! Jungle is considered one of the most difficult roles in game. With a champion like Master Yi who ganks and they're not considered very strong, it can be tough to get kills. Knowing when people have their summoner spells up is very important, and it makes it a whole lot easier when you have Poro Fesser. Poro Fesser is an amazing app that allows you to track all the summoner spells that your opponents use. Poro Fesser not only helps you out during the game, it also helps before the game, because right before you go in, it shows all of the most common and effective builds that your champion has. You can know right away going into a game what your core items should be, and it helps you focus more on the game rather than your build. The pre-game app also gives you key information about your teammates and the enemies as well, in order to be able to see exactly who's been playing, what weaknesses each side has, and of course, who's on a win streak. You can try Poro Fesser today with my link in the description. Hello guys, my name is Zinarias. I have been playing Master Yi since Season 6. My peak rank, right now it was rank 6 with 1483 LP. It was one week ago. So I was choosing Master Yi since Season 6 because I simply love shredding tanks. The way he's able to completely one-shot 5k HP full tank once he has, let's say, 2 or 3 items surprised and shocked me and it kind of motivated me to play myself and I fell in love with him. If you play Master on a jungler, it's very important that the first six minutes of the game you play absolutely pixel perfect. Because Master Yi especially, if he falls behind in the early game, you will end up having huge trouble and it will be very hard to recover. You can mostly only recover if enemies do mistakes and the higher elo the enemies are, the harder it will be to find mistakes. Okay, so basically it's a very simple place which a lot of people do. I always cover both entrances. Like I don't trust my teammates, which I used to. Like you cannot change what your team is doing. All you can do in the game is change your own gameplay or try at least to communicate better with your team. So what I'm doing, I'm covering 
both entrances. I'm warding one side, covering the other side, always checking if they're in weight, resetting at the perfect time, which is 0.54, buying sweeper and then going to the other side. If necessary, I also communicate with my team. If you're really scared that the enemy graves, we take as an example, is invading you, he's taking his red into your blue, you can take your red and go into your blue as well. Most of people think, wait, but Grace can simply win a 1v1 against Master Yi because he can kite Master Yi, but that is not entirely true. You will be faster on your blue buff and you can drag the blue buff into the blue buff bush, then you sweeper. So the Graves has no way to put a ward because the ward will simply not give any vision since you sweeper. So he has to face check. And Master Yi is out of all champions in the entire game one of the strongest if someone face checks him and he will be able to 1v1 every single jungler in the game. He's extremely strong in that. One of the things that Zenarius does in order to make sure that his games are as consistent as possible is by full clearing in 80% of his games. Master Yi's biggest weakness is in the first few minutes of the game. So if your early game is as consistent as possible by just full clearing every single time, you're going to reduce the amount of games that will be decided during this stage in which you have the least amount of impact throughout the map. If you're able to get a full clear off without enemies to invade you, because let's say you clear your camps, there's a, most of the time a 100% chance you get your camps. So there's a 100% consistency, you get gold, you get XP, you get into the game and you can carry from that point on. I take chances that are always at around, let's say, 80% chance that it works out well for us. We take the example, you fail a gank on bot lane. Not only does your bot laner get fucked sometimes and you get fucked yourself, but also the enemy mid laner knows, okay, enemy jungler's bot lane. That means there's no way it's gonna be mid lane and I always know when I have to ward. The enemy jungler knows. This camp's up, this camp's up, this camp's up, so I'm gonna take those, I'm gonna take this. The enemy jungler knows everywhere. And you know nothing about the enemy jungler because he's still in fog of war. A lot of responsibilities you have as a jungler and you lose a lot if you fail a gank. The biggest power spike for Master Yi is for sure his ultimate. Before that, he's not very strong in ganks, but he's indeed strong on counter ganks or if your team has some setup. Do your camps and then gank. If you fail the gank, Go take your other camps. I think the most important thing which separates me from all the other Yi mains, especially also the other Yi mains in Hilo, I call it good habits I'm doing. The clear I'm doing is always perfectly on time. I don't miss anything. I always know how to clear my camps perfectly and I never fail that. When Zenarius talks about percentages, he's basically talking about factors leading up to a gank. Does my team have good CC, good burst, or does the enemy team have good escapes? Do we know for sure where the enemy jungler is? The more of these factors are on your side, the higher the percentage that this gank will work out. The main reason that Master Yi isn't played more by professional players, it's because he has none of these positive factors on his own. He doesn't have burst, he doesn't have CC, and he doesn't really have good mobility. Let's compare Master Yi to a more traditional jungler like Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai has mobility, burst, and CC. She can just run into a lane and solo kill someone if she wants to. Master Yi is very risky in high elo for this reason. You cannot gank unless somebody is already basically winning the lane. He cannot be useful to his team like a tank jungler. If a tank jungler falls behind, he's still gonna have CC and he's still gonna be somewhat relevant to his team. The only way for Master Yi to be useful is to farm and snowball. But that is what Zenarius does in almost every single one of his games. Did you see that carry? One of the things that really separates Zenarius from other junglers is how much he values Rift Herald. Most junglers like to play bot side. There's more champions bot side, and there's a dragon objective to be able to scale into the late game. It's very natural for most junglers to path towards that side of the map. But since Zenarius is aware of that fact, what he's thinking about as a jungler is he's thinking about what the enemy jungler wants to do. 
If Zenarius knows that the enemy jungler is a strong ganking jungler, and he's aware that they want to get a good advantage bot side, then what he's likely to do is set himself up so that his jungle path eventually ends with him doing the Rift Herald as the enemy jungler is ganking bot or taking dragon. While other junglers may try to match or cover their team when they know the enemy jungler is going to show up, Master Yi's early game isn't really strong enough to be able to guarantee a positive outcome. So Zenarius is just really looking for the biggest advantage that he can grab for himself. While Dragon is the better objective for scaling on your team, Rift Herald is much stronger for snowballing. Getting that objective is minimum at least one kill worth of gold. If you're able to get a full tower in the early game with Rift Herald, then that's two kills worth of gold. This extra income in the early game is very important for Master Yi because it allows him to hit his power spikes much faster, which allows him to 1v9. The one thing that can stop Master Yi is crowd control. Stuns, snares, suppressions. If you have a team comp with none of these things, then you're gonna have a really hard time to stop Master Yi with just pure damage. Amazing Master Yi players like Zenarius will simply stop all of your bursts by pressing Q and pressing W at the right times. CC is the biggest counter to Master Yi, so what can you do against someone with a lot of CC like Lulu? Zenarius's answer? Kill them before they can CC you. Master Yi has a combo most underestimate, which is an instant one-shot combo. So first of all, you get your double strike ready. This is very important for that. And then you flash on the enemies instantly. You're not using Q, you're flashing on the enemies, pressing your First attack with ult and E together. Keep in mind, use your E after you already did the auto attack animation. The E will come through on that, but the E will simply last longer if you do it 0.2 seconds later. Afterwards, you're instantly doing the W auto attack reset. You press W, then you do another auto attack, then you press your Q, and then you do another auto attack. If you do this combo correctly, the enemies will have no chance to react to it. It will be instantly. Even if we flash on a Lulu, for example, I had so many situations where she has no reaction time to even ult herself because this combo is so fast. And if you do this correctly with Rageblade, you will be able to do seven to nine auto attacks with true damage from E, with Kraken Slayer damage. And if you calculate that, yes, that can be 4 to 5k HP one shot. W resetting has always been in the game for Master Yi. Most people do not know how to use W correctly. If you use W simply to heal, that's not very effective because in team fights, Master Yi's job is to put out so much damage as possible, kill everyone or die. That is literally his job. His job is not to survive. And most people get it wrong by picking enchanters as well, like Kamas and Lulu, which I really dislike playing with because they are meant for long fights. Master Yi is meant for short fights. You engage on the fight and either you make a pentakill within five seconds or you die in one second. No other things are optional. Right now, Riot Games changed it. So you have the first 0.4 seconds, I think is it. You have 90% damage reduction, which is pretty much disgusting. You can use that mechanically very well you simply dodge the abilities by simply pressing W at the correct time and you will notice the enemies deal absolutely zero damage. You can use this as a surprise tool as well. Enemies will do make flash engages to make some burst on you. Then you simply react with your W and they're like, oh my god, I didn't kill the Masi, this can't be real. I said that the first six minutes in the game are the most important and you should never fall behind on that. But what is also the second most important, I would say, is the late game. How you play the last five minutes of the game. The last team fight, which is the most decisive, you can have a huge impact on that, which most people underestimate. It is very important that in late game fights, you never get too nervous. You always wait until your team engages, so you can get a very nice follow-up engage or you wait for the enemies to use their abilities. That is, that is not something that is very small, that is very, very important. It is very, very important to always wait until the enemies use something or your team engages. You will always get 100 to 0 from burst. Another thing is in the late game, 
when you have a 30 item power spike, do not, please, do not continue on farming. Cover your teammates. You simply, Masti has so many weaknesses. He can't really poke. He can't turtle. He can't, he can only hard engage and all in. That's not a problem. You can play around his strengths. His all-in option gives your team, and I say this so many times, but I can only say this again, if you want to climb, cover your teammates. Let your AD carries and mages play the game for you and just protect them. Most people do that wrong because they think they are the carry and they need to engage, but they need to just wait and chill behind the carries. And if they get engaged, he can take the role and become the carry and kill them all. The idea is basically to be a threat by simply existing. If the enemy team is saving spells or saving abilities for when Master Yi goes in, then they won't be able to properly fight the rest of your team. When they do inevitably use their abilities, then Master Yi goes in and kills everyone. This is pressure by presence. Every single Master Yi player seems to have the same mentality. Kill the enemies, run in, chop, 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 go, 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 go. But Zanarius is a master of patience. He knows that you can only really 1v5 by doing a proper 5v5. Your team's job is to make sure that the enemies are killing them instead of you. Master Yi is not a pure 1v9 champion. He only appears that way because he does the most amount of damage in the game. People are complaining a lot that they can't climb because of their team. This is something which most people struggle on, the, on lower elos, especially in silver, in gold, in platinum. This is another reason why I would highly recommend you to pick up Master Yi, and this is also a reason why I picked up Master Yi. I love to take full responsibility, and with Master Yi you can do that. With Master Yi you are able to carry games even if your team feeds. But if they die, you can simply farm their lanes, you can farm your camps, you get so strong that you can carry the game even if your bot laner goes 0 20. This is another thing that no other champion can do on the entire game. Master Yi can carry games when your team ends. Keep that in mind by selecting your next champion.